Hey everyone, what's going on? Phoenix here. Today we are doing part two of Revenge of Mitos. If you haven't yet, please watch part one. This is a really awesome high level raid only on the Levistra server. This is custom content for Asheron's Call. Really, really awesome quest. So the first encounter in this second part is the Lodestone fight. So to start this whole thing, your group has to have beaten part one and turn in a pyreal bar to the corrupted guardian at the entrance. That is going to flag your fellowship, lock your fellowship, and you have two hours from there to complete the quest. So the goal of this first encounter is to defeat the Lodestone. The entire time we're fighting, these Rust Golems are spawning. The Rust Golems are weak to Acid, so most of the Fellowship who will be fighting them is going to be using Acid weapons. And now you can see there are like light, uh, lava balls shooting out of these side things, and a lever has spawned. Our ranged characters are trying to destroy that lever, which shuts off the... Uh, I don't even know what these are, just like flow of lava coming out of these things on the side. And then when that happens, we just stop DPS on the lodestone so that a second encounter isn't triggered at the same time. Now that second encounter that's going to happen is a magnetized golem that is going to spawn and it's going to have a red dot and be a player killer, uh, at least the dot, but not in actuality. And well, I guess it is kind of a player killer, but if you don't kill it fast enough, it will turn into a giant Rust Golem Kingpin type thing. And there it is in the left of the screen spawning. If you do it partially, but not all the way, it turns into a Rust Golem Bruiser, which actually happens later on in this fight. That is a hard thing to kill, but not that hard. The Kingpin is very difficult and does a ton of damage. So we really don't want that to happen. So basically all of our melee characters go and start attacking that magnetic golem that reduces its effectiveness and then it moves around the room and you have to do it I think three times as it moves between the different corners of the rooms. And if you do it well enough, what's going to happen is it's just going to turn into a regular rust golem, which is quite easy to kill. Now, a message will pop up saying chips of the golem have fallen off, and that means that we were successful. And there it is. It just turns into a rust golem, which is really helpful. So you'll notice I have my UI set up a little bit different for these encounters because I want to make sure when my surge of destruction goes off, I want to make sure when my spectral rares come down. And I want that information front and center, and I kind of don't care about chat because we're in voice chat with the fellowship, so that makes communication a lot easier. Now this spot that I'm standing in here is where you can hit the lodestone with five blasts at the same time. So I'm, uh, this thing is immune to life magic, so you can't imperil and vulnit, but it is not immune to uh, corruption and corrosion, the two uh, projectile damage over time spells that Void has available. So that's the best amplifier of damage that you can get against the Lodestone. And you saw at the very beginning, to start this quest, I used a Spirit Thirst Rare to just make my damage insane and also to make the dots more effective for the rest of my fellowship. The way we have our fellowship organized for this fight is we have one person imperiling the Rust Golems as they spawn. We have most of our melee characters, especially any two-handers that we have, using an acid rend to kill the Rust Golems. Myself, one archer, and war mage who I think died at this point in the fight, attacking the Lodestone, and one person healing, helping Vuln, kind of being a flex mage, which is super helpful. And if the people attacking the Rust Golems get a chance where there's not that much going on, they can switch to a Bludgeon Rend and attack the Lodestone. Now, the Lodestone basically doesn't take any damage from Acid. There's another spawn of the Magnetized Golem, so we break off the Lodestone and start fighting the adds as our melees are occupied with the Magnetized Golem. What I was saying about the Lodestone is that it doesn't take any damage from Acid, so your summons aren't going to do any damage to it can't be debuffed in any way so that's not going to do anything this fight got really intense people 
dropping all over the place. I think we ended up finishing this fight with only four or five members of the Fellowship still alive. You can see here, these Rust Golems do a ton of damage. I think they have 80% overpower. So basically they're completely ignoring your melee defense except for 20% of the time. And at this point, I'm just running away from them because I don't want to die. And if they hit me, as you can see, my health just immediately shreds to nothing. Once we get the Rust Golems back under control, I'll go back to attacking the Lodestone. The one thing that's slightly annoying about the lever when that's going to spawn is that it can't be selected very easily. It needs to be clicked on the radar or it needs to be clicked from vSense. So if you're not using vSense, it makes this fight a little bit more difficult. But you just have to be aware of that going into it and just use your radar effectively. So we're back on the lodestone. I think someone else, Della Steve, just died. So we're down to, uh, the, the, the fellowship has dwindled a little bit at this point, but we decide to keep going to see how the next encounter goes, which is going to be the next rusted lever. Now, when this next rusted lever spawns, you'll see lava appear around the edge of the room. That lava deals a ton of area of effect damage if you stand on top of it, and there it is. So once again, we break off the lodestone. Any of our missile characters go after the rusted lever, which is immune to magic, so I can't help with that in any way. So that's why I am switching to help imperil because, again, we're down quite a few characters at this point. Very precarious situation, but our archers do a great job of getting that lever down super quickly. We get the adds back under control, and then we'll go back to attacking the lodestone and hopefully finishing this fight. Summons at this point are mostly just a distraction to keep the rusted golems off of me or uh, off of our other characters. They don't really do too much, although I think they do okay against the Rust Golems, but again, when they're attacking the Lodestone, they're doing zero damage. This fight took us, I think, three attempts on this run, which is pretty rough. I know this is going to be quite a long video, but we do have two hours to complete this quest. I cut it down as much as I could, but I do like showing the entire fight because this, especially this one's so intense, just very precarious. So you can see the Magnetized Golem spawns one more time. Weakened Magnetized Golem now in my V-Sense. All of our melees doing what they can to bring it down. I'm helping Volm. I'm trying to throw dots on stuff. And our melees do a really good job of getting the Magnetized Golem down. But it is going to spawn into that Bruiser that I mentioned earlier. Here it is. It's a little bit bigger, but it's kind of hard to tell. But there it is, Rust Golem Bruiser. So we focus everything we can to bring that down. It has, I think, 70,000 HP. And all the Rust Golems just chasing us. Just I'm just trying not to die. Everybody's trying not to die with all these Rust Golems while we try to get this bruiser down. And we do a great job, everybody focusing up on it. That's really the last big encounter. There is another lever that spawns, but I think at this point we are kind of in the clear. Getting encouragement from everyone who's died. I just love the complexity of this encounter and everyone on your fellowship is working well together. It, it just goes so smoothly and is so satisfying that everyone plays their role and everything goes well. Even in this fight where we had some deaths, you know, everyone's still working really well together to get a win.
There's the last rusted lever. It spawns at, I want to say, 5%. So we break off the lodestone one last time. I kind of wanted to rush the lodestone and just get the win, but it's definitely better to play it safe. Rusted lever goes down, but we lost another character. <laughs> Two more characters. So yeah, there are just five of us left at this point. Or maybe only four of us. Um, yeah, five. Really crazy. But everyone did an amazing job getting that lever down. And now I can focus on the lodestone and we can get this fight finished. And we're so close at the end. And there it goes. The rusted lever goes down and a magnetite ore spawns on the ground. You use that and it'll give up three of your liberated souls that we got from part one, if you still have any. And that's going to be the first reward for this dungeon. We'll head down the hallway to the next area. And just keep heading through to the center of this I don't know, these like three side rooms and one center room, and you'll see there's a lever and a gate. Someone in your fellowship will use the lever and Strand the Vengeful will spawn. If you remember, we saw Strand the Vengeful at the end of part one. This is a pretty quick fight where you bring down Strand as a whole group of you, but this is not the real Strand. Strand says, no, it won't be that easy. Then what's going to happen is a lever will spawn in each of the side rooms in order. So the, you split into three different teams. The first team pulls a lever, then a lever spawns in the second room. They pull a lever and a lever spawns in the third room. The third team pulls that lever and then three corrupted guardians will spawn. So each team has to kill their own three corrupted guardians. And you have about two minutes to kill all three of these. These things fight with two-handed weapons, so they do cleave, which is really hurts. Um, the way we split it up is because we have two Void Mages, we put one Void Mage in one room uh, with two DPS, another Void Mage in another room, me with two DPS, and then our three, what we thought were our highest DPS characters in their own room because we didn't have a third Void Mage. Void just makes the damage so much better. But to help those people out, what I'm going to do is once we get our setup, I'm going to help Imperil and Volm, the Corrupted Guardians, in that third room. And if I can reach, I'm going to use Destructive Curse to help out that way as well. We did have one person die uh, in one of the other rooms, but thankfully that team did a really good job of picking it up. And I believe some people were using Blood Drinker rares, and I still had a Spirit Thirst rare popped, and our other Void Mage also had their own Spirit Drinker rare popped. Just healing, doing anything we can to help out that other team. Corrupted Guardian is so close, though at the time is also getting really tight. And they just made it. So then you move into the center. The other side rooms now are filled with fire. And if you stay in there, you take a ton of damage. A bunch of corrupted guardians spawn. Some of them throwing discuses, which is super cool. Kind of like Tron vibes. Throw pulling the discus off their back. But uh, nice fight where you get all nine of your fellowship members to work together. very easy to die to these guys, especially if you get multiple on you at once. A couple of these are corrupted gatekeepers, so those are have higher health, 
and are harder to harder to kill. This guy, yeah, he's got 350,000 health. When this guy goes down, a corrupted sliver is going to spawn on the ground and he turns into a redeemed guardian. So this guy was corrupted by Nergal, but I guess wasn't originally there to help Mitos. You hand over three of your liberated souls to get that corrupted sliver, which is the second piece of the reward. He tells you it is the evil one you seek and take the path of head. This is no test of main strength that one of you must take the burden of her undying hatred upon your own soul, and it is a heavy burden indeed. And this is a good clue for what this next fight is going to be, where we actually, for real, fight Strand the Vengeful, who says, enough games. The first thing we always try to do is land a magic yield because he does have a really high magic defense. But you'll see the red wisp in the right side of the screen. That is the soul of Strand. And the way this quest works is that one person has to go up and use the soul, which engages it. If you don't do that, the soul of Strand will basically cast harms that can one hit you, even though I have like 500 health, the harms would one hit you potentially. So you have to go engage the soul. It's going to debuff you. So you'll see every once in a while, someone will be moving around very slowly. The other component of this fight is the acid. So you'll see the green message, the east side of the room is about to be bombarded. And then there was all that acid that flies around the room. There's a couple of different combinations of things that you have to do. Some of them is east side. One of them is west side. One of them is the middle. Now you just saw another green message, which was the soul whatever someone else has to engage it so their demonic knight goes and engages the soul and takes the anger upon himself so that you don't get harmed now what just happened is strafing the room with the acid so the best way we found is to jump over it into the middle sometimes i like to get greedy and try to cast a spell in the middle of strafing um it usually works out in my favor so it's okay to get greedy this one is the statue's attempt to fire, but sputter and fail. Okay, didn't take that one too good, but managed to heal and get away from it. So what this one is, is it kind of alternates which statue is going to fire. And the best way we've found to avoid this is to just jump straight up in the air. So for this fight, everyone is using bludgeon, AR, bludgeon, skeleton, slayer weapons. Obviously, Srand can be fully debuffed. So that helps a lot. And the Void Dots with the Spirit Thirst just make a huge difference. He has 3 million health. What we found for the person who engages the soul, because they get so debuffed, they have to use Tomb Rock Salted Meats or other chugs as a means of healing because your healing skill is not high enough to heal. Your, all of your spells, you can't cast any spells to heal. So it's basically just try to survive. We, we've designated two people who engage the soul and they just rotate back and forth who engages the soul because you can't engage them twice in a row. At this point, we're just trying to race Strand down, <laughs> hopefully uh, get a acid attack that is favorable so we can keep fighting him, but we get strafe again, which kind of messes with the DPS. There's also an effect where if you stand too close to the wall, there is like an acid cloud in those areas. So you really, you kind of have to stay in the center of the room. The jumping over the strafe. I really like the jumping over the strafe. That's the one that I find the best. so funny to say that we're close but we are close with 200,000 health left it's so much health but again we get strafe so you have to jump over and kind of stop dps and here's where i get greedy with casting a spell and just dodging that acid barely but keeping the dots up is so important because they increase the damage just so much for the whole group you can also see the soul is throwing fireballs every once in a while
And there he goes. Sran goes down on the ground, spawns a pile of bones. Burning bones, just use that. You'll hand over five of your liberated souls this time. And you'll grab a burning bone. And when you're ready, you'll head down the hallway to the next encounter. Nergal will spawn and do a uh, speech calling us weaklings. Saying we couldn't have gotten this far without Mitos' help. During our endless undying servitude, you will come to curse his name. Blind fool, he welcomed his death through the front door. There's some really good writing in this quest. His flesh remains. Fitting that she'll be the instrument of your destruction and then the remains of Mito's spawn. This fight... They are all insane, but this one is just continues with the insanity. This fight, we use Lightning Rend Undead Slayer weapons, a combination that you've probably never heard of before, except for that rare War Wand. I forget what it's called, but I think it has that on it. So these liches spawn that blow up into acid. The remains of Mitos vulns you potentially and shoots lightning at you. Um, and these archers spawn uh, longbowmen which do a ton of piercing damage and then also explode on death with like a tugak so a raven's fury life ring that basically will one shot you what we have found works the best is to just run around like crazy and attack the remains of mitos as much as possible the other thing that happens, I don't know if you can see it very well because it's not something that I do during these fights, but there are these tombs, black tombs that spawn. And if you don't kill them fast enough, uh, like lich arch mages, or I think they're called black maguses will spawn, that are very hard to kill, do a ton of damage, and they're there, unstable longbowmen. So if the black magus is spawned you're kind of screwed so what we do is we destroy the tombs those can only be attacked by melees mages and archers can attack the remains of mitos and they can attack the longbowmen so pretty much the entire fight i'm just dotting the remains of mitos and i'm dotting the unstable longbowmen Moving around, trying to get the liches not to blow up on me. Or if they do, just healing fast enough. The corpse of Mitos groans, summoning reinforcements. So he does that a bunch. But I think we've got this fight down where just attacking him and doing as much damage as fast as possible works. And on the ground, after he dies, the Tears of Mitos. Then Mitos will spawn because uh, I guess we've liberated his body. He says, my spirit is free to roam these halls again, but the great evil has not yet been purged. And then Nergal will spawn. Mitos calls him a traitor and a usurper, and Nergal says, now you're a captor as well. Puts him in a Verindy energy cage, and Mitos says, please help me. And when I have grown bored of your agonies, I will cast you out of these halls forever to be blown away on the wind like a tattered rag. Now we head into the hallway, which is just a gauntlet of everything we have fought in part one and part two, all thrown at us, one after the other. So it starts with Corrupted Guardians, which I should have mentioned before, but we use Pierce AR weapons with Golem Slayer if you have enough White Pyreal Bars, which you obviously get from this quest. It's nice because we get to all work together, even though it's a tight hallway. We can have people rolling, we can, you know, some of these fights you get separated or 
you know, you have specific roles, but in this one, it's just kill as fast as you can and move through the dungeon. So after Corrupted Guardians, there's going to be an Expedition Soldiers and Myrmidons. So this is reminiscent of the part one Expedition Leader fight that we did. I mean, this whole quest is just absolutely insane. I love it. Like, to turn the Halls of Mitos into this, it's, uh, it's very creative. I really like it. So and they must be based on floor traps because as you move forward, more of them spawn. I'm trying to use rings here. It's not super effective. Tried to use blasts a little bit. Worked a little bit better. Honestly, this is not what I'm needed for in this quest. The Expedition Myrmidons do a ton of damage if you don't get them down fast enough. Here we're using our Slash Undead Slayer weapons, which we had from the first part. Here a Black Magus spawns, and this is the end of the Undead section. Next is a Whirling Dervish, which is a mini boss version of the uh, Whirlwind from part one. This thing can do a ton of damage. It is weak to cold. You can use AR cold on this one, unlike the first uh, boss, which you need to use cold random because it cannot be cold. forward into the next section where you'll see rocks falling from the ceiling reminiscent of rock biter there's a rock at the end of the hallway that's destroyable i didn't realize until after we had already started fighting it but it can be imperiled and vulned i just started throwing dots on it and then using blasts because you can hit it with all five of your blasts After the rock is destroyed, you'll move forward and there will be one granite golem at the far end of the hallway that's throwing rocks at you, similar to the rock biter fight. It does a ton of damage and a unique one called Stone Craw, a level 350 golem. Can be imperiled and vulned. The rocks falling from the ceiling are kind of weird. It's just like funny because it's such a small space for rocks to be falling from the ceiling. So it kind of messes up your view every once in a while and like does some weird things where you're like standing on top of them randomly. Like there, there's a nice mountain on top of my head. But they do do a decent amount of damage. Like that was 10, 23, it adds up. Once you stay, take Stone Crawl down, you can move forward into the next section, which is the Pit Dweller, similar to the Pit Fiend or Pit Beast from part one, except this one can be Imperiled and Vuln, so you can use Pierce AR or Pierce Rend works too. I know we tried Cold, but I think Pierce is better. Void really shines here. You can use Blast, hit with all five, and I'm critting for 3,500. Which, that's just an insane amount of damage from one blast. A bunch of Vile Swarms will spawn, which can be taken out relatively quickly with a Pierce Friend or Pierce AR, whatever we were, you know, whatever the person was using for the Pit Dweller. Move forward into the next section. 
and now we get the Flaticate Assassins, the same ones we fought as the final boss of part one, except here they are ghosts. So what we decided to use here was our soulbound weapons. Imperil, Vuln, Void Dots, these go down relatively quickly, but the thing that with these is, again, they, if you can even see on my radar, that there's no orange dots, even though there's two monsters still. So you have to manually click on these or have them in V-Sense again. I think we had a little bit of miscommunication on which assassin we were targeting first, but we eventually got them down. It's just amazing how much damage can be output when the whole fellowship is working together on one target. So we head around the corner and now we have Sir Alfric, who is the final boss of part one. If you remember, we were fighting his skull and headless body in that part when he was a skeleton. Now he's a ghost. Kind of looks like a human ghost wearing a nice hiame and some plate mail armor with an axe. But he is still a ghost type, so going with those soulbound weapons again. Amalthea, at last my soul can rest. And that's Sir Alfred dead. We can keep moving on. And the final fight of this section is Strand, Avatar of Vengeance. Another ghost. Look at that damage rating, 150. Who do I have to pay to get a damage rating of 150? Like, can you imagine how much damage my Void Dots would do? And 75% overpower with this awesome burning brand two-handed weapon. I do love the, like, maiden ghost model that's, like, the same as Lady Terra Lamore and uh, the ones in that printed quest with the necklace that I can't remember the name of right now. Once we kill Strand, the ghost of Strand shrieks her rage and fades into nothingness. And you head down to the final boss Nergal himself does a little cutscene where he talks to you, but I kind of cut that out because we're already going really long on this video. And then as a Nergal, the ever-living spawns. You can see Mitos is in a prison in the center of the room. These golem bodyguards spawn. Now for fighting Nergal, we kept with our lightning undead slayers. Bludgeon Rend or AR Bludge for the golems, same weapon as Rockbiter. Mito says, hurry, the evil one has called on his wicked spirits to aid him, and an energy prison spawns, which is now attackable. So we destroy the energy prison to release Mitos. trying to keep track of my Spectrals and also my Spirit Drinker Rare. Now we made it to this fight with like an hour left and it was still really close. So you destroy the prison and Mito spawns. Free at last, you have my eternal gratitude. And now I've not yet grown so feeble that I cannot deal with the likes of you. He's weakened the evil spirits for you. Now my battle comes in the spirit realm. 
So these golem bodyguards continue to spawn throughout the fight. But what's going to happen next is four undead are going to spawn in order. I believe they spawn at 5% life for Mitos. We didn't know that at the time. We thought it was a little bit timed. So we kind of were holding off on dealing damage to Nergal until those undead spawned. But once we realized it was based on a percent of health, we started attacking Nergal again. Nergal does these insane flame waves. I got one shot by that the first time we got here. And there you go, Absalom spawns the first undead. We'll all focus on these undead to get them down as quick as possible. We went with our slash undead slayer on these. I think that that had tested to be the best. The next one that's gonna spawn is the unclean which is a void magic dealing undead. Again, these ones have to be manually clicked on. They don't show up on the radar. You could put them in vSense, which I didn't do because it was easy enough to just click on them as they spawned. Again, the whole fellowship focusing them down. And the last two our sisters, and there I take the flame wave to the face with the overpower, dealing 100 damage per, which really hurts. And there they are, the sisters. Sister Fekla does a cold wave, I believe, deals cold damage and casts a bunch of waves and stuff, walls, there's the wave. And the last one, Sister Ardra, which does fire. Meanwhile, the Golem Bodyguards are spawning. They cast these crazy flame rings. So if one gets dragged to you and casts a flame ring, you can easily die by accident. Back onto Nergal with all four of the undead down. In death, you will be transformed he says when he says this a whole bunch of corrupted guardians are going to spawn these are the discus throwing ones and you can see these giant pillars of light to really <laughs> brighten up the screen and are kind of blinding if you go through the pillars of light once it kind of gives you a warning and if you go through it again you can get smited so basically just trying to avoid those at all costs while we take down the corrupted guardians starting with the ones by the door and then going to the ones by the altar Meanwhile, the golems are still respawning one at a time. And Nergal was throwing flame waves. He just drained my stamina for 90,000 stamina, which I only have 800, so it seems like a little bit overkill, but... Very annoying, especially for melees relying on melee defense, or, I mean, for me, I don't have melee defense, really, so... I mean, I do, it's just pathetic. I don't think that the debuffs left. They just are timered based on level sevens. So that's why I started to recast some of them. Now Mito spawns and says quickly to my side, I'll protect you from this devilry. You can kind of see, although it's a little tough because of my view 
zoomed in, but there's this all this black smoke spawning around the room. And if you get caught outside of Mitos' protection, you will definitely die. Then the fume is dissipating, and you can... Mitos leaves. And we go back. The Corrupted Guardians spawn again. Along with the Golem Bodyguards. I don't know if the debuffs are on or off, so I start recasting some of them, just to be sure. We got them at about half health. And he says, Metal no more, Mitos. Do not stand between me and my prey. Mito says, quickly to my side, I will protect you from this devilry again. And the black smoke spawns, although you can't tell. Oh, there you can tell. He's actually, like, projecting out light to protect us from the black smoke. We can still fight Nergal during this. You just can't move from behind Mitos, or you'll die. Then the Corrupted Guardians spawn again. More light. And now you can see there's a Tusker in the middle there, which shows up as a red uh, PK dot on the screen. And they are, like, um, offerings, I think they're called. I hope I click on one. I don't remember what they're called. We don't actually find out... Oh, unwilling specimens. So, theoretically, they're being sent to, like, be sacrificed and maybe, like, heal... Nergal or turn into something more dangerous. We never found out because we didn't want to find out. We just kept killing them as fast as we could. So that's still an unknown in this quest. That light spawned really close. <laughs> The light's a really cool effect. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. I don't even know what to compare that to. Maybe it's just a pillar, like, slightly recolored or something. Nergal says, No, I will not be defeated by vermin like you. And then Mito spawns one last time in the center of the room and says, Quickly, by my side. Wasn't sure if you had to stand directly in the bubble this time or just behind it, so I stood under it as much as possible. Corrupted Guardian spawn again. Mito says, the fume is dissipating. I must leave you now. Be on your guard. You really need the zoomed out view in this fight. Otherwise, you can't see what's going on at all. flame wave really hurts and overpower with the spells is just crazy no chance to resist or anything there's an althoi unwilling specimen a little bit of lag perfect timing for the lag he's so close to being done with only under 300,000 health left Does cast dark lightning. My cloak ate that one, but it dealed 169 damage. 
He says, die swine, die now. As we're getting so close to the end, we're all getting super excited. And Mitos goes down, but the Corrupted Guardians do not stop spawning. At this point, we're kind of freaking out. Mitos is saying, you have my eternal thanks. Meanwhile, I'm just trying not to die. Everyone's trying not to die. And then the Corrupted Guardians start to turn into Prismatic Guardians. And they are kind of our friend. On the ground is a pile that is the flesh of Nurgle. You can use that and we've got veins of Nurgle. Although it did damage to me. Evil energies radiate from the vein lump of flesh despite the protection of your gauntlets. Handling it causes pain. If you talk to Mitos, he says, your feats are worthy of renown and reward merely hand me any artifacts you gathered along the way as proof that you took part in the cleansing of these halls. Prismatic Guardians can't be used or anything, so once you're ready, you can hand over all of the items that we got, one from each of the bosses. So, handing over the veins, a mighty victory for the light. You get 45,000 luminance, 350 million experience, five white pyreal bars, a key to the vault, and I got a carnelian clasp. This clasp was different for everybody in our fellowship. Handing over the other uh, items rewards white pyreal bars, and it can reward random rare items, which I didn't get one this time. The Carnelian Clasp is super cool. It had Flame Proof 2 on it, so it acts as if you're wearing two pieces of the Flame Proof set. And then the key to the vault gives a bunch of alt currency and some uh, useful consumables. This is such an amazing quest. Really, really grateful for the creator for making it. Uh, check out their uh, spoiler video. At, I'll link to that in the description. And thanks everybody on Levistress who ran this with us. This was a ton of work to beat. We've been working since November to try to get this far. And just huge shout out to everybody for, for this quest. So thanks for watching. Bye.